here we go again. It is happening to us all, all over again. Gas prices are starting to go through the roof. And I don't know if you've been in the business, uh, you know, for a year or for 10 years. You've seen this happen time and time again where our industry is struck with a situation where the cost to do business goes up and the ability to continue to charge uh, your customers diminishes. There's no way that you can keep tagging this on to the customer because they're feeling the same pinch that we are and it creates this resentment with the, with the customers where they feel like all that you do is push all the expenses over to them and it feels kind of unfair. I get it. We're all in this together, and and I understand that that you know a lot of us can't can't uh, swallow the margins that um, you know come with with gas prices that are are, are you know, kind of shooting through the roof, and it is real easy to spend an extra fifty hundred hundred fifty dollars you know on a weekend just because of of gas, and that that money's got to come from somewhere. So what do you do? Well, this video is uh, kind of a 10 easy steps that'll help you save uh, gas and, and gas money. Um, I don't suggest that the first action that, that any of us should take is to immediately go out and start adding surcharges or, or, or upping the prices on the customers. And again, it's your business and, and you you've gotta you gotta eat I get that I understand that but um, immediately going to higher prices does certain things uh, and one of those is is that it perpetuates this uh, inflation because one you're paying the price which means uh, you know, the gas company is going to assume, well, you know, if they're going to pay it, I'm going to charge it. And I know that's kind of an oversimplification, but, you know, as a whole, if we as, as a nation, you know, put up with it and continue to pay it, then it, it's going to be what it's going to be. And the other thing is, is that if you, if you pass that, that money on or that charge on to, to a customer, then what happens is they have to find that money from somewhere else. So what they do is they raise their prices. For instance, if you charge, uh, you know, a plumber, and I hate to keep picking on the plumbers. I, I love my plumbers out there. But if you charge a plumber a $50 surcharge on his delivery fees, all he's going to do is he's going to pick that up on his end and, and pass it off to his customers as well so that he can make the money back so he can keep feeding his family and doing the things that he does. So you're perpetuating the inflation and, and it doesn't help um, when, when we do that. So there are some things that we can do. First and foremost, uh, I think that uh, you need to take a little bit of time and, and plot out your your roots on your deliveries and figure out what is the best way to in, incorporate all your deliveries into one route that is the most efficient route this takes a little bit of time but what it does is it creates an opportunity for you to sit down before you're in the mix of these things and think about it and, and find the way that is that is the shortest and, and the most fuel efficient. You can also do some other things along with this. Uh, you can try to pick up some more customers in, in a particular area, and we've kind of touched on this on some other videos, but what that does is it, it, it kind of lessens the blow because if you're doing two rentals in one area, obviously, the the hit on the gas uh is is a lot less so um think about that and take some time and try to you know plot out your route so that you are not you know just haphardly going out there and 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 
and you know committing to a route that, that may be less fuel efficient or may require you to do more driving than you need to do. Along those same lines, you need to plot out your gas uh, fill routes as well. Fill up your tank now. And the reason I say now is because you can pick which gas station you're going to go to and you can pick the price of your gas and you could fill up your vehicle causing you to have an understanding of what it's going to cost you. Okay, if there's a gas station that is close by that is in a, in a reasonable range or a cheap range or a range where you can get a discount or, you know, all the, all the factors that go into it, then you do that and you, you know, learn what it's going to take. Also, you know what the route is you're going to take for your deliveries and you know what the mileage is on that. So you can also use some some of the apps that are available online like gas buddy or, or some of the other ones to kind of pick out where you need to stop and get gas it's been it's been kind of on both sides and i i do remember seeing an old mythbusters uh episode that said that a full tank of gas gets gets better mileage than half tank of gas so filling your tank up is what you need to do don't go and try to fill it up again at another gas station or or you know try to to cut that in half uh because what you're doing is is you're creating an opportunity for you to stop and go uh to to turn and 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 move in such a way that you're 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 taking up more gas than you would be if you're moving the most efficient your vehicle is going to get is when you're doing somewhere close to the speed limit and you're and you're not stopping and going so you know uh, highway miles you get better mileage than you do with city miles because you don't want to go through a lot of red red lights and you don't want to go through a lot of stop signs that eats up a lot of gas the same is true with with stopping and going when you're you know every five minutes you're stopping to get a, a snack or you're stopping to get gas or you're stopping to, to do this or that you need to try to avoid as many of those as possible so that you're you're continuing to go and you're getting the, the best gas mileage that you can get. Use your most fuel efficient vehicle that can do the job. Now I know that sounds kind of silly and a lot of us only have one truck or we have, you know, whatever we have. I, you know, I've, I'm kind of a mid-size or bigger size rental company. I have five different vehicles you know, I have vans and trucks and I have a, a box truck. Obviously my box truck is not my mo most fuel efficient vehicle. I'm getting probably eight to 10 miles to the gallon. And unless I am loading it full of units and I'm going to, uh, you know, a big event or, or several events that are close together, it, it doesn't make much sense to use that. In fact, it would be cheaper for me to take two smaller vehicles than it would be to take one box truck, especially if, if you know, there's some distance in between my rentals that, that I can separate. So keep that in mind. Use the most fuel efficient vehicle that you have um, and, and, and that will keep you from, from you know, overusing on, on your gas and at the same time, you know, put you in a position where you you're spending a lot more money make sure you keep up with the maintenance on your vehicle and also check your tire pressures a lot of the newer vehicles now have you know pressure gauges and pressure alerts it'll tell you if you, your tire is getting low um don't ignore them don't don't just assume that it'll you you'll figure it out later there is a ton of 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 efficiency that you lose when you don't have your vehicle operating in its, its optimal condition. So it may cost you a little more in the beginning to, to maintain your vehicle, but it will save you in the end because you are getting much, much better gas mileage and that's coming off the top. Um, you know, using the right kind of uh, you know, tires and oil changes and, and the stuff like that, all of that makes makes sense. Also, your your brakes. If your brakes are aren't properly functioning, they can be stuck in a position where they are dragging on your vehicle and causing you to get less less mileage. So, 
maintain your vehicle make sure that you keep up with with all the maintenance and and get it checked because that's going to save you in the long run avoid idling uh and sitting with your your vehicle running at a at a customer's you may have a, a you know a short drop off and you and it's a hot day and you want to keep the air running and and you know you're doing what you, you you do or you may stop for lunch and decide that you're going to eat inside your vehicle and you're going to keep the vehicle running or whatever you would be better off to go inside turn your vehicle off go inside and sit down for the 15 20 minutes it's going to take you to eat your lunch because you're burning gas when you sit there and idle it doesn't sound like it's a lot and it may only be pennies at a time but when you start adding all those up over the the length of your season you'll find out that it's a lot of money that you 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 are really really spending um just sitting there letting your vehicle idle um and and, and expend that gas it also it also kind of works into um the maintenance of the vehicle as well the more that your vehicle is, is running the more that is wearing the more that is wearing obviously it's it's going to start burning more gas and, and uh, cause more problems for you so don't let it idle if you can help it and uh you know save on that as well you need to avoid using uh, any kind of trailer or attachment that is going to cause you to have more drag on your vehicle, especially if you don't need it. Now, I've seen videos on social media where some of the guys are, are going to deliver their units and they have a trailer with a, with a dolly uh, attached to a truck and they have one unit in the trailer. It doesn't make any sense at all to me and again, I get it. It's sometimes it's hard to lift the units to get them in the back of the truck. Um, but even if you loaded it at your house and took it in the truck and then picked it up with a trailer, at least that's half as much as you would have been doing where you're dragging this trailer all over town and causing you know, your vehicle to have not only wind drag, but also a, a weight drag that, that's going to eat up the gas mileage. Um, if you don't need it, don't use it. If you, you if you need it, use it. Obviously, a trailer with you know five units on it can be efficient in itself because you're you're going from one one rental to the next, and you don't have to go back to your your shop or your home or your base wherever you got your units at, and and make extra trips to get get the 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 inflatables. So it can be efficient to use a trailer. It's just not efficient if you are not, um, you know, saving on the mileage. Uh, you're just really saving on the back. It would you'd be better off to, to you know try to try to figure out a way that you can get the unit into the truck and 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 save that. Also, if you have units that are sticking up or above or you know you have that one unit and it's hanging off the side and it's and it's interrupting that. The aerodynamics of your vehicle that's causing a problem and again those pennies are going to add up so what you need to do is lay it down in the back and try to maintain as much of the aerodynamics of the vehicle as you can so that you can you know uh, maintain that um, reducing the weight can also be helpful um, sandbags are really really he heavy and you know if you have 10 or 12 or you know on on a vehicle for for a couple of units you're, you're adding five six seven hundred pounds easily to your your delivery uh water bags are really good alternative because you can empty them and fill them at the customer's house um, or simply just stake it and try not to use um as many sandbags as you can you always want to make sure that the, the, your unit is secured. But I, a lot of the times, what I will do is I will utilize uh, the edge of, of parking areas or concrete or wherever, driveways or whatever, that, that you know, I'm, I'm putting the unit on. And then use as many stakes as I can and then supplement with sandbags so that you're not carrying all those sandbags around. Think about that and think about how you can lay your unit out to where you're catching, you know, off the side of it, two or three of those tie down points uh, with a stake instead of using, you know, the sandbags. And it'll help. 
you and your drivers need to drive smart. Leave early. Give yourself plenty of time. Don't don't lay on the gas. Don't drive aggressively. Don't, you know, uh, aggressive starts and start, stops always, you know, cause wear on the engine and also that that jolt of, of fuel that that's really kind of eating away at your your gas. So drive smooth, drive slow, as slow as you can. Obviously, you know, you got to get there. You got to you got a delivery that you have to do. You have a schedule you have to keep up with. But give yourself plenty of time and and get those done in a manner that's going to save you gas and you're not just constantly gunning it trying to get there or you're driving in a manner where you're weaving in and out of traffic and going around people in the whole nine yards um drive safely slowly and and and, and efficiently to save that gas use uh the technology that you have um you would be surprised you know i've lived in in, in certain areas for years and years and years and really never realized that the shortest route uh, wasn't the route that I had always been taking my whole life. GPS has, a, has an amazing ability of showing you things that you don't see unless you're doing it. Um, use your GPS and look at the, the routes that you're taking so that you can avoid uh, taking the longer routes and GPS will show you exactly how many miles it is. They'll even give you an option to where you could pick uh, the most efficient route or the most, uh, you know, uh, using uh, interstates or not using interstates or, or you know, a hundred different ways that can help you to make it where you're doing uh, better. Be very, very careful though that you know the settings that you're using because I have also had GPS that will take me an hour out of my way um, for some reason because it assumes that this this particular way is, is a better way or, or you know, whatever. Um, GPS can also give you traffic updates and that's huge too because we go back to the idling thing. You don't want to be sitting in traffic wasting time and wasting gas uh, if there's a big wreck on the on a road or an interstate and you're trying to to get to the customer sitting there for 15 20 minutes in traffic is not helping at all so use your GPS to, to kind of avoid that and um, you know make it easier for you you can also use those trackers that uh, you know that are made for fleets so you can kind of keep track of your your guys if you if you're bigger and you got several vehicles that are going on you can kind of keep track of your guys and the which way they're going and kind of help them and coach them along. Because honestly, to tell you the truth, you know, I said this before, planning it is much better than getting out there and just doing it in the mist. And most of your employees are just going to do it in the mist. They're just going to figure out a way from the, from, unless they're told, they're just going to figure it out. So, you know, guide them the best way that you could do and it'll help as well to save gas. Along those same lines, uh, educate your your guys. You would be surprised how many, and especially in this day and age when they've taken a lot of the driver's ed and stuff out of schools, you'd be surprised how many of the guys that are driving simply don't understand how a car works and how you know, coasting works and how you know stop and go traffic works and how you know these things can have an effect on them. Um, you can even do certain things, you know, create uh, a competition with your guys that if uh, they utilize a better mile per gallon on a delivery weekend, then they get a bonus. You're going to pay the money anyway. Might as well give it to your guys and make them happy, right? So, I mean, what if you, you told your guys that, you know, um, Obviously, you know, the, these are taking in mind that you have, you know, a certain kind of vehicle or they have similar vehicles that get similar gas mileages or, or however you want to work it out. But whoever drives the most efficiently, um, you, you'll give them the money that they would have spent on, on gas. And whether it be 20 bucks or 100 bucks, um, 
again, you're making your guys happy and you're, you're, you're saving money on the gas. So it's really not costing you any money to begin with. So keep that in mind. Hey, look, I hope these, these tips help you guys again. The prices are creeping up, and I, I know they're only going to go higher. So, so keep those things in mind. Let's not push it all off on the customer. Let's take some of these steps and save that gas money so that you can keep doing business and you can keep the prices low so that we can keep getting it out there. Uh, if you like these videos, please let me know. Subscribe. Uh, give me any comments, any tips that you guys got that can let me know uh, or let everybody else know uh, how they can save gas or how they could save money in their business, we would really appreciate it. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time and I hope that your business is doing well. Thanks a lot and we'll see you the next one.